Hi, welcome to the video. Um, I'm going to start this challenge off with something unrelated. I always draw a picture of my cat being in the first page of every sketchbook, so there she is. Um, but the 100 head challenge is something that I've been aware of and really interested in, but also actively avoiding for a pretty long time. The challenge was originally created by Ahmed El Dori. I'm actually surprised to see that his video was only posted four years ago because it seems like this challenge has kind of been a staple in the YouTube and Instagram artist community for a really long time. I guess four years is in fact a pretty long time, but it just feels like it's been longer than that. Um, I'll link his video and information in the description. I used a combination of the reference photos that he had originally picked out and some that I collected myself on Pinterest. The original idea of the challenge is to draw a hundred heads or portraits in 10 days, so ideally 10 per day. I knew immediately that I would not be doing that. It's a pretty fine line uh, between like lack of faith in yourself and self-awareness of your own limitations, I think. Um, but I knew that having a time limit like that or feeling like I needed to do 10 per day, at least for my first attempt at doing this, would make me um, crash and burn immediately. So I allowed myself to take however long it took. I tried to make sure to do at least a couple per session. I don't think I ever did 10 in one day. I think the most I did was eight, um, but that felt, I felt pretty proficient on that day. Most days I think I did between three to five. I don't have um, live drawing footage of all of them because I initially did not want to start filming them at the beginning because I did not want to add that extra layer of like performance pressure um, because I was really nervous about doing these drawings. I was also doing most of them seated at my desk rather than using my standing desk and I definitely have a real bad problem hunching over with my face like two inches from the paper when I'm drawing sitting down, which doesn't make for great footage either. But I do have a few clips, which I've included. I sped them up a little too, just because I feel like I draw pretty slowly, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. I kind of went back and forth. I felt like normal speed was kind of like wasting time, but I also feel like sometimes watching sped up footage is kind of can be unpleasant to look at. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know if you have any thoughts about it. Anyway, why was this challenge so scary? So very scary. I just have a weird complex about drawing human portraits. I'm really unpracticed, for one. And the reason I'm unpracticed is because I've always avoided it. Um, even though it's really interested me, like people's faces are really interesting. I feel like there's this weird level of embarrassment for me when it comes to drawing human portraits. Like, it's, it's like, I know that they cannot, but it's like, what if one of these people, you know, who's like, probably some of them are professional models, some of them are just folks, knew that I was sat in my house on a Thursday, staring at their face for 40 minutes. Like, the thought of that being found out um, makes me feel really embarrassed. Even though, like, this is, how else do you draw a portrait other than looking at a person's face? But it's like animals are safe, because if I do a bad drawing of a cat and then show the cat, like, the cat's not gonna know. The cat's not gonna know I did a bad job. The cat's not gonna be like, ugh, you know, so. I mean, intellectually, I know that it's like, these people are not gonna see these drawings and like message me and be like, oh my God, why'd you draw my nose like that? But it, it feels like the threat is there. <laughs> I had a couple drawing classes in school where we would pair off and draw portraits of each other for the day. And that was always the most stressful thing for me. Like, I was so worried <laughs> that I'd turn around my easel and the person would like, be really polite, but also be disappointed. <laughs> like maybe I'd accidentally accentuated a feature that they're really insecure about, but I found really interesting to draw or just, I don't know, just it feels 
a person's face feels very personal. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, but anyway, I, the one thing that I learned doing this challenge is I, I, I got over that hurdle, which is like, was a large hurdle for me. Um, I had a lot of fun doing all these drawings, um, which was kind of almost a surprise to me. Like, because I was so worried about them, I thought every one of them was going to be like, pulling out my teeth. No, I actually, I had fun. Did I struggle with them? Yes. Did I like all of them? No. There's some of them that I finished and I was like, that's gross. I wish I could rip it out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it in because every drawing is worth a drawing in itself. <laughs> Life advice. Every drawing is a drawing. But yeah, I mean, I did, I did, I feel like I learned a lot, but I'm also trying to tamp down this feeling that I didn't learn enough. Like drawing a hundred portraits didn't turn me into a portrait expert, which is very silly. And it's definitely not something that I expected, but I also, there is this like little feeling of disappointment where I felt this was gonna be like super transformative um, to my drawing process. Uh, and I think maybe it would have been a little more transformative if I, you know, really kind of focused it, focused on it more as a more condensed challenge rather than being so spread out. I don't know. Maybe that would have helped. Maybe it wouldn't have. I, I like this page. I can say that. I like it. I really love Colorized pencils, especially this violet one. I think it's my favorite, favorite pencil. But can we talk about <laughs> colorized pencils for a second? I love them. I've always loved them. I use them in every sketchbook, but they are not coal erasing off of this paper. I don't know what the deal is. I, if this paper is like really smooth, like drawing on it almost feels kind of slimy, especially with a graphite pencil. It's also really prone to smudging and the color erase pencils do not erase well off of it. So I think I also learned that I prefer a rougher paper and I don't prefer this paper in this sketchbook. So there we go. Another free lesson I got out of this challenge. But yeah, anyway, the main thing I got out of this challenge was just like, just working, just not being intimidated and just doing it. But I do want to do more, which is exciting for me. I want to work more on getting a better hang of like facial structure because I feel like a lot of my drawings do feel kind of flat. I want to get better at creating like a true likeness because a lot of these drawings I think look fine. Some of them I would say look nice, but then when I compare them to the reference photo, they the likeness isn't there. Like I'm not trying to obtain like photorealism or anything like that, but it just it feels like something is missing. It feels like something is kind of off. Like maybe I'm just settling for a nose that looks like a nose rather than a nose that looks like this specific person's nose. So I think it's good that I'm starting to get that like shape language. It's a very art school term uh, in my brain a little bit better, but I just have to expand on it more. There's a cat appearance. Um, I'm actually surprised <laughs> the cats didn't bother me more uh, while I was doing this. Um, anytime I'm on my at my sitting desk, which is also my computer desk, they are both up here like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Like they are here right now as I'm recording this voiceover, standing in front of the monitor. I cannot see the preview of the video. Here's a page where I 
was very determined to like work faster and also work smaller. So I pre-drew little boxes for all the portraits to go into. I don't have like full footage of these. I think my camera stopped recording, but I just have, so I was doing like um, graphite underdrawings for most of these because I still not confident enough to just go in there with a more permanent medium immediately for the sketch. And since the color erase pencils were not erasing, um, I did result to a little graphite underdrawing that I could kind of mostly erase and then go back in with other pencils or pen or whatever I did later. I think I was mostly pretty pleased with this page, the finished result. One thing that may be apparent, or it's definitely really apparent to me um, because I lived it, but also I can see it visually. And I think everyone's kind of like this, whether they're like more comfortable drawing uh, people facing <laughs> or animals or anything facing to the right or facing to the left. I'm definitely more of a, you know, person facing to the left of the page person. Anytime I had to draw someone that was, you know, either three quarters or profile view facing to the right of the paper, it was like a major struggle. And you might even be able to tell that like, there's a lot of those loaded in the back end of the sketchbook because I was putting them off. I, um, I think it, it would have been like more honest for myself to like pull the numbers out of a hat or something, but I did like pick which portraits I was gonna do and try to like arrange them on the page. So they would look kind of nice. And that led to me leaving a lot of the ones I didn't want to do to the end. This page was really fun. I liked that one. When I got to 50, I allowed myself to uh, do a full pager and add something in there that was an animal because I just really wanted to draw an animal after all that time. There's a couple in graphite here. Like I said, I didn't do too many in graphite, even though I am really envious of people's beautiful graphite drawings. I just, maybe with a toothier paper, I'd be more happy with it, but something about graphite, just it's so slick. I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy that sensation. This is where I started messing around with the ballpoint pen. This page, I feel like the pen was popping off. You may notice something about my numbering here. We'll come back to it. But yeah, that was a pretty good day. And then immediately I felt like kind of a not so good day. So I don't know, it helped me get used to this a little bit more of like the feeling of being really satisfied with something you drew and then the next day feeling like you've never drawn before in your whole life. <laughs> but I think I think that's normal. So anyway, like I said, I learned that I skipped one. I did not learn this until I was totally done. I kept all my images in a little folder and moved them over as a little treat to feel accomplished after I finished one. And then I checked and then it did not say 100. <laughs> so I had to do another one. So I did another one, which was fine. It, it didn't upset me because I had already kind of planned to like push on and do like a few more. I wanted to redo a few of the ones that I was least happy with to try to see if there was like a clear progression in skill or just sort of as like a self redemption. Those will show up in the video shortly. And I'll be honest, I don't love them. <laughs> they look different than the first attempt. Do they look better? I don't know, but you know, I don't love them, but drawing something I don't like is no longer like crushing to me. Um, I'm free, <laughs> I'm free of that, so that's good. You know, I can just try drawing it again another day. But yeah, I'm really glad I finally committed to doing this challenge. I'm gonna keep trying portraits in my sketchbook. Maybe I'll just draw a bunch of ears or a bunch of eyeballs one day. And I think it might be really cool to come back and draw these same 100 portraits again next year, like after a full year, to see what's changed in that time. So I might do that if I remember. 
I apologize for the like <laughs> extreme earthquake footage. I, I have a table mount arm for my camera and it's I'm a little rough with the table here. But yeah, anyway, thanks for clicking on this video and hanging out for a bit. I hope it inspires you to give this challenge a try or one like it if you haven't already. If you have done this challenge, I'd love to hear about your experience. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you've done this before, if you've made a video about it, I'd love to see it. But yeah, that's all. That's the end. I did it. I hope you're having a great day and uh, see you next time.